The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Yes, check please, people. It's all about looking your play. The food was just fabulous. I should be in psychoanalysis for the amount of money I spend in restaurants. I had a horrible experience. I don't even think we were at the same restaurant. And everybody, I'm sure, saved room for those desserts. You better. Leslie Sabraco, welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, fireman Tony Rivera burns with enthusiasm for his pick. It's the hot spot for very traditional Italian flavors, served with personality and punch in the same Godfather-esque setting since 1928. You can sit with your back to the wall if you want the full effect. <laughs> and in-house counsel for a steamship company, Eric Sweat, would like to sail to Spain, but with so little time, he settles on one of the open-air tables set in a small alleyway in San Francisco. It serves up Catalan flavors direct from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. But first, social worker Twery Anderson's neighborhood houses a small spot with a sign that says, this is a kitchen, not a restaurant. It's the kitchen that she visits with her family for great flavors and the best lemonade around. Simplicity is the key to this location on Rand Street in Oakland. It's the short route to the Holy Land. Holy Land restaurant been kosher since day one. Kosher means fit. Fit to be eaten by people who observe the Jewish dietary laws. No, the rabbi does not bless the food. The rabbi is supervising uh, the food. Uh, one of the most important things about kosher is the humane treatment of the animal. It's about clean and disease free. At the Holy Land restaurant, we serve uh, Israeli, Middle Eastern, and Jewish dishes. It's actually a wide variety of dishes, uh, from the very popular Middle Eastern falafel to Moroccan couscous and a Jewish matzo ball soup. It has always been my mom's passion to have her own restaurant since she always cooked at home. It became a success very fast. And 11 years ago, they opened a store in Berkeley, and that's when I took over this one. This place is also turning into a, almost like a meeting place for people to meet and hang out. And it's really nice to see that. Now, Tueri, you're a lemonade connoisseur, That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> what makes Holy Lands the best? Well, their lemonade is so fresh, and it's clearly made with fresh lemons, and you hear them getting the blender going in the restaurant, and you can tell also that there's little bits of lemon and peel and pith and all of this in their lemonade, and it has fresh mint in it, which just gives it a nice little twist. And also, it doesn't it's not overly sugared, because I think oftentimes when you go to places, their lemonade is so sweet that it ceases to be lemon anymore <laughs> so that's I, I mean I simply enjoy it it's fantastic but you say fresh is the keyword for holy man fresh yes definitely and they have different things every day so they have their regular set menu but then they'll have things that aren't even on the menu right. for example so it will just be up at the counter and the owner who's often there she will say oh you should try this or try our fresh soup today or, and Miriam Levy's the owner and she's had uh, she's got another restaurant in Berkeley as well that's correct yeah there's another holy land on College Avenue near Ashby mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Tony, do you keep kosher? I know. It is really Mediterranean food. I mean, yeah, what correct. was your experience when you ate at Holy Land? Well, first, I had to travel overseas from San Francisco to <laughs> Oakland, which I don't do often. Right. But, you know, I did it for the show. And uh, it was, it was um, I went with my family, and we were not sure what to expect because mm -hmm. I'm obviously not an expert at that type of food. But I have to admit, it was super fresh flavorful it was a uh, like my wife said it was a holy in the wall restaurant <laughs> yeah. it was really cute it's, and what did you have uh, I had the chicken shawarma mm -hmm. I had the uh, fried Yemeni flatbread mm. very delicious very flavorful I've never had that actually oh, it was excellent and um, 
We also, we shared the grand uh, hummus combo mm -hmm. that was, uh, it had a salad and it came with the pita bread. Yeah. And we also had the, uh, we were calling it the kosher enchilada. It was um, oh. some busak. Yes, that's right. And it was so good. And like I say, these, a lot of the flavors were real n new to us, but we totally enjoyed it. It yeah. was, they were fresh. And it is Mediterranean food. It is right. falafel and hummus and couscous. And, and what did you have when you went, Eric? Well, you know, it was interesting because uh, we ordered things off the menu they didn't have. Mm. And so we were a little disappointed that mm. they uh, didn't have lamb the night we were there. Mm. Uh, they, they had some desserts on the uh, menu that they mm -hmm. didn't have. And uh, we thought the service was, was lacking. Mm -hmm. The 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 but pita this sandwiches. But a place to go. Well, for exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely is a sandwich shop. It's mm -hmm. not a restaurant right. uh, where you would go to sit down necessarily. Did uh, you go for dinner? It sounds we like we went for dinner. Okay. We See, I've dinner. only ever been for lunch, so I I think it might be a little bit of a different experience well, for dinner. Well, and, and we maybe we weren't fair to the restaurant because we showed up with mm -hmm. friends and we were planning on having mm -hmm. uh, sort of a sit down, not necessarily with tablecloths, but we thought we'd sit down with our kids and have dinner. Right. And, and uh, there was a, sort of a struggle at the at the ordering the food. The mm. owner wasn't there at okay. least when we ordered the food. Um, in that we would order something and we'd get, don't have any, mm -hmm. not allowed to make it, don't have it. And mm. so, what we did get was pretty good. One of the people in our party had really good falafels, mm -hmm. sure. and the next person had falafels that were soggy mm. and d were disappointing. Uh, I, I think we were maybe there on a on an off night. Yeah. Well, what do you normally get? What do you recommend when you eat there? I normally get what Tony was describing, the combination salad plate, mm -hmm. which has the baba ganoush, beet salad, carrot salad, hummus with the pita. And it's just, it allows me to just sample a lot. Right. And my husband usually will get like the kebab sandwich or the shawarma or something like that. And so we share a little bit of that. And then I always get the matzo ball soup. Hot, outside, cold, doesn't mm -hmm. matter because it's such a light soup. And I love that big piece of matzo and the, the big ball. And then they have noodles and lots of veggies and it was perfect, you know. And mm -hmm. that area is really mm -hmm. a yes. fun area, fun right. neighborhood. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the Grand uh, Lake uh, Theater is there, and there's all kinds of things to see and do. I think for lunch, it would probably be a pretty it's good fantastic. call. The prices are, are decent. Mm -hmm. The ingredients are fresh. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for our food, and uh, we weren't really sure what to expect. And then we saw the neighborhood beat cop come in and order something. <laughs> so I told my wife, I said, oh, don't worry, we're going to be all right. <laughs> you got the, if you got the beat cop yeah. coming in, it's yeah. usually a good sign. But we went in our sweats. It was like a Sunday yeah. afternoon thing. Right. And, and it's closed on Saturday. Yes, that's yes. Right. And Friday so evening. Yes. And Friday yeah. evening, yeah. so be it's aware sunset. if people are going out. I guess, it, I don't know if it was the owner that was there. Uh, it was a very nice woman, yeah. and she came over to us. Because, you know, I went in, and I, I, I told the gal at the counter, I, I don't really know what I'm ordering, but, you know, I really want to try a variety of things. And, you know, I'm not too adventurous, but, you know, yeah, help well, me out. Obviously adventurous enough, right. Yeah, right. and uh, and she was, she, you know, she was nice. She said, well, we made this. I said, okay, fine, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. take it. We'll try it. Did you um, feel like you got value for what you paid? There was definitely a bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. um, you walk away, you're full, you had a great meal, and it was light on the wallet. Yep. It was, uh, I totally enjoyed that part. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Twerry, this is your restaurant, so give us a quick summary. Well, if you want fast, fresh, and tasty Mediterranean flavors that's light on your wallet, like Tony said, go to Holy Land Restaurant in Oakland. It's a great place to come after a walk around the lake. All right. Tony? Um, I thought that the Holy Land restaurant was definitely worth a trip overseas. Uh, <laughs> it's light on your wallet. I had enough money left over for the bridge toll. <laughs> That's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. And Eric? Our experience wasn't the best, but the, but the food I think is fresh, and if you went there with the right expectations and uh, for lunch mm -hmm. uh, or uh, for takeout, it would be, it would be fine. All right. Mm -hmm. If you would like to try Holy Land, it's on Rand Street in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-272-0535. It's open for lunch and dinner Sunday through sunset on Friday. Reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $10. Tony likens the host of his pick to a knee breaker for the syndicate. 
This sets the scene for the large, locals-filled room with live piano music and a spacious bar for cocktails and conversation. Keep your tucks in the closet and mosey on down to South San Francisco to a place called Sodini Bertolucci's Ristorante. Bertolucci started in 1928. It's uh, the last of the big old school houses that, that used to be in the 60s here in South San Francisco and San Francisco itself. And it's just got a ton of, ton of nice history. A lot of the stars dined here way back when. The Circle Star Theater housed a lot of people from Frank Sinatra on up or on down. I was 14 years old and um, I used to work with my father in his bakery in uh, San Francisco and this was one of our stops. And every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning we'd see Mama Bertolucci and I thought one day I would love to have a restaurant like this. And sure enough, you know, lo and behold, all my dreams came true with this place. It's a place that's comfortable for, for infants up to people that are 100 years old plus, which I've had. Good, big, hearty, simple food. It's a nice, cozy bar, a little bit of entertainment. We have a nice, uh, nice pianist, Kevin Pickett, who's a lot of fun. Bertolucci's is, is just a passion. You live it, you eat it, you breathe it. Everyone that's here, it's kind of like a big extended family, which feels real nice. So it's definitely home sweet home. Get a boss. All right, Tony, you hung out with the garbage man on the last trip down there for you, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> at the bar. At the bar. I always felt you could meet a better class of people at a bar. Oh, of course. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I just... Especially this bar. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. I just, I feel that uh, Sudini's Bertolucci is kind of a throwback to classic Italian-American. You're not going to go in there and, and you know, get a, a, a meal that's, you know, a tiny uh, cracker with a little piece of olive or something. Layered this, with Aki tuna. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, the working man and working woman's they restaurant. Eat. The, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's like walking onto the, the set of Scarface or something. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes I think American Italian restaurants can be kind of pretentious and they're trying to be Italian restaurants. Right. And this definitely wasn't it. You know, it was, it had that old school feel, but it was still modern with some of the posters. But it's been around. updated. I mean, the, oh, the yeah. restaurant itself stays, dates back to the 20s, but yeah. Peter Sodini, who's the, the new owner, mm -hmm. uh, reopened it in 2005 with new decor. And so you still get that yes. character, yeah. but with a little bit of a modern touch. Yeah. Yes, exactly, right. and so nicely balanced. We got that flavor right off the bat oh when yeah. we came off the off the freeway and pulled in in front of the the restaurant. Mm -hmm. There were these guys parking their hogs, joshing around, <laughs> nice. blocking traffic. And these big guys that were mm -hmm. obviously locals and mm -hmm. uh, you know nice guys, mm -hmm. and they were going in there, and we knew immediately that it was a you know sort of unpretentious kind of place, uh, mm -hmm. a, a good place to go, and, and we thought it was a lot of fun just for that reason. Oh yeah. The food was great, mm -hmm. and the service was great. I so appreciated the local feel and how they really connect to their customers because it's clearly people who come every week. It's, it's, definitely, it's, it's definitely a locals, yeah. locals hangout. A lot of places like that kind of live on their reputation. They live on the decor and the kind of the vibe, mm -hmm. the mafia vibe mm -hmm. or whatever it right. is that you have there. But the food's actually really well cooked. It's oh, not yeah. soggy. The pasta's not dripping in water. Uh, where no, you know the, the food pasta is really the, this the is the star of the show yes. here. It, well, it, it's both. I mean, yeah. you're, you're not disappointed by the food when it comes. You're sort of ready to be disappointed the first time you're there because you're thinking, okay, well, this is the decor. This is sort of the vibe. Mm -hmm. But the food was actually quite mm -hmm. good and and uh, and, a, and, a, and a really pleasant surprise. And what did you have when you were there? I had the veal parmesan, which was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the lasagna was terrific. It was mm -hmm. very, very classic Italian, uh, was well cooked. Uh, and my uh, daughter had uh, the tortellini with a white sauce. It was mm -hmm. That was just mm -hmm. delicious as well, as good as anything you'd have in North Beach, I think, right. in the mm -hmm. traditional Italian restaurants in San Francisco. Right. Mm -hmm. And what did you eat when you were there? We had, one of my favorite things actually was the polenta appetizer. It was so well done. It was in a fresh tomato sauce. And I think mm -hmm. oftentimes we'll find that polenta can either be too hard, which it's not supposed to be, or almost overly mushy and mushy, but this was a perfect balance. The tomato sauce was fresh, just the right amount of cheese. Um, and then, I had um, the gnocchi with pesto, and it was different than gnocchi that I've had before because it was filled mm -hmm. with pesto, and then it had a pesto cream sauce on top. It was a little too saucy for my taste, but the sauce was fantastic. Um, I mean, the portion was enormous, so I had some for leftovers, and my daughter loved it. She just ate it up. Sort of, you know, real food, real service, right. real people, 
real place. Right. And Tony, when you go, what else do you love to eat? I mean, clearly um, you've got your favorites in this classic place. Yes, I do. Um, I love the uh, the gnocchi mm -hmm. is outstanding. Mm -hmm. I love the uh, cannelloni is to die for. Okay. It's Good excellent. It's you know everything's homemade. Uh, the sauces. I mean, it's you really can't miss. Um, I had the uh, veal scallopini and. They're nice, big portions. Mm -hmm. You know, you worked all week, you're gonna go to a restaurant, you're paying someone to cook for you, give me something I could sink my teeth into. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, and sometimes you wanna go and have a nice big New York steak, it's on the menu. Right. You know, they have fish dishes, it's, it's Italian American, right. and it's classic, and you can't beat it, you leave, you're full, you walk out with a doggy bag, it's yes. great. And you've heard some nice uh, Sinatra and Dean <laughs> exactly. Martin, oh, and Louis yeah. Yeah, right, and now Michael yeah. Buble. And yes, you know. exactly, and uh, I was there on the night when the owner actually sat down and started singing with the piano player, oh, which was great, yeah. and uh, he was actually sounded pretty good. And <laughs> his, his wife actually, um, makes the, the biscotti homemade. Oh, which I had, yeah. which was fantastic. All right, Tony, this is your restaurant. Give us a quick wrap up on Sodini's. Um, I think Sodini's Bertolucci's is classic Italian American cooking. Uh, it's a great value. It's a family owned and operated restaurant that you'll totally enjoy. There's live music, there's plenty of parking, uh, the portions are ample, and you feel like you're part of the family. All right. You agree? I completely agree. I wish it were closer. I wish I could transplant it to San Francisco or Oakland, and I would definitely go more regularly, but if I'm going to the airport, I will be sure to stop by. Okay. And what about you, Eric? I, yeah, it's the real deal. A good restaurant. It's a lot of fun, and, and uh, I wish it well. All right. If you would like to try Sodini's Bertolucci's Ristorante, it's on Cypress Avenue in South San Francisco. The telephone number is 650-588-1625. It's open Tuesday through Friday for lunch and dinner, with dinner on the weekends. Reservations are recommended for parties of five or more, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $25. Eric offers his dining suggestion as an inexpensive alternative to a trip to Spain. He joins the cosmopolitan crowd of travel-starved locals and European expats for a taste of the Costa Brava. It's in an alleyway named Belden Place in San Francisco. It's called V44 Catalan Bistro. <laughs> The idea behind B44 when I open, I try to create a place where I could go and eat, which means that I'm a working class person. I could go and afford the food there and afford the wine there. Most of the recipes at B44 are originally from my friends, mothers and grandmothers. When I had the idea to open a Catalan restaurant in San Francisco, way before we found this space, I went back to Spain for a year and I did the research. I get in my friends, houses for a day or two, they have their mother hunt for rabbit, hunt for mushrooms, hunt for snails, and then cook it for me in order for me to get the authenticity of the, the dishes and portray it here in San Francisco. We have about 170 wines in the wine list, although we started with 37, but I got so enthusiastic about all the new wines coming from Spain that right now I spend more time working on the wine list than I do cooking, actually. And definitely B44, uh, it's, it's my baby. I never dreamt of having a restaurant downtown here and I'm very proud. I was able to bring the culture through the food to the Bay Area, from Barcelona to San Francisco. Now, Eric, I know you like to sail, so you must love all that fresh Catalan seafood at B44. I do, they, they, are, they have a wonderful seafood selection and uh, it's a lot of fun to go and, and try the various dishes that they prepare, Catalan style, which many people may not have tried. Mm -hmm. Um, what I think I like best about the restaurant, though, is, that, is the location in San Francisco in the middle of Belden Place or Belden Alley, uh, where you can go outside, sit outside like you would in, in any great European city. And so it's a, it's a, 
although the restaurant itself is not inexpensive, uh, it is an inexpensive way to experience a little taste of Europe. It the definitely has that Euro feel, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It does. There, there, there are a lot of expats, uh, European mm -hmm. people living in the, in the Bay Area that go to uh, that restaurant and others. But I think B44 in particular has good uh, Spanish style food or Catalan uh, mm -hmm. style food in particular. The paellas are wonderful. Uh, about and eight or ten paellas mm -hmm. on the list. There are. There's several different kinds, and they have adventurous ones as well. They have seafood type. They have mm -hmm. a, uh, the hunter type with uh, 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 non-seafood type paellas. Mm -hmm. They have feduas, which are made with noodles instead mm -hmm. of rice. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have paellas um, that are made with squid ink, which right. adds a really nice, wonderful... Which is a traditional Catalonian touch. A absolutely. And that, that adds a wonderful kind of mysterious, briny, salty taste to the food that's terrific. They have a terrific wine list. Yeah, and actually um, the wine list is uh, one of my favorite in all of San Francisco. I would argue it's it's possibly the best. I had a great experience. I went on Bastille Day, oh, fun. Oh. which is yeah. traditionally a uh, day when that whole alley just becomes packed. Right. So I wanted to experience the uh, all the festivities. Uh, I had a great time. The place was packed. I sat outside with a buddy. We had a great time. Our server was great. His name was Mario. He took care of us. Um, kept our uh, wine glasses full. Um, I had a beautiful um, appetizer. It was the uh, shrimp adobo. Mm -hmm. it, had, it had that, that um, Spanish flavor. It totally reminded me of uh, European cooking. You're outdoors, you're, you're And shoulder. the patio is a sort of a party patio, absolutely. Oh, yeah. you're, exactly. you're right there for the ambiance. People are walking the by, it's you know. Energetic. It did remind me of being in Europe. But the appetizer that we had, which was the piquillo peppers, stuffed with Dungeness crab, was so bland and so mushy, it was just like eating flavorless mush. I mean, I don't know any way other to describe it. And then topped with watercress, which has absolutely no peppery flavor whatsoever. It was a complete disappointment. That was yeah. not their, their, their strong point. But yeah. they, have, they have a dish of fried anchovies that okay. will come in a big mound with an IOE so mm -hmm. sauce on the mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. that I think is just fabulous. Yeah. I mean, we had a very similar dish mm -hmm. when we were traveling in Barcelona some mm -hmm. years ago. And it, and it tasted authentic, it tasted fresh, and mm -hmm. the, the, the deep fried fish was exactly right. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, right. it wasn't fishy, it was wonderful. And Daniel Olivea, who is the owner and, and chef, mm -hmm. uh, was really one of the initial people who brought Catalonian cooking to right. the United States. So I do have a question. Is Catalonian cooking, is it um, traditionally less salty than other styles of Spanish cooking? I would say more salty. You yeah. know, that's so I would weird. Argue more, salty. Okay. more salty. <laughs> okay. I would argue more salty. The reason right. why I ask <laughs> is because I distinctly remember when I was in Spain about 10 years ago, the food, I was in Madrid and Barcelona, and the food was much saltier than I experienced yeah. at B44, and I was wanting more salt. And I'm not a person who salts her food very yeah. often, but I just felt like it was lacking in the salt. And then I was trying to make sure, okay, is this because the, the salt tea and the complexity of flavors is trying right. to come out and on the sea bass which is I, what I had for my entree I definitely did experience that the sea bass was cooked very well um, it was very interesting as it cooled the flavors coalesced better we uh, we had the paella it was excellent the seafood was very fresh and um, it was the restaurants close to my house mm -hmm. loved it um, Parking's a little tough, but yeah. I mean that's Absolutely. you're in downtown San Francisco, so you don't try to park there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it, Take a cab. Yeah. It, it was just it's a great uh, alternative to flying, you know, nine hours or ten hours over to Europe, and it's just a very uh, up atmosphere. We've Especially. had some fun experiences there. We've eaten there a few times, and I mean, one time, you know, you're sitting next to some Europeans that are just there, sure. or you're you're. You're sitting next to somebody from uh, Kansas who's just visiting San Francisco right. and getting a big dose of, of right. what San Francisco is about. It's wonderful. Once we were sitting next to a Texan transvestite hip hop artist <laughs> who was trying to bump <laughs> cigarettes from us, even though we didn't have cigarettes. And yeah. we had the all best time. All in San time. Francisco. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It was wonderful fun. And, and the waiters can deal with all of those sorts of things. It right. was great. Right. You know, my service wasn't fantastic, I have to say. I felt that, you know, I don't like having service where people are on you and almost overly attentive, mm -hmm. but I felt it was almost too standoffish. We had to wait from the time our dessert plates and everything was cleared about 15 minutes before we got our bill, and that was only after we Did asked. Did you have the creme de Catalonia? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. It was so good. Creamy, perfect. The cinnamon flavor was, oh, just perfectly mm -hmm. balanced. It was amazing. I, I would go back simply for that. Now, Eric, this is your restaurant, so what well, can you tell I, people? I, when, when you feel like just having a little dose of the, the rest of the world, a little travel, uh, satisfy that travel bug that some of us get sometimes, that's a really nice way to spend the evening. It's not a cheap date, mm -mm. but uh, we've always enjoyed the meals we've had there quite a lot. Mm -hmm.
All right, Twerry. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't go again unless somebody was taking me out to dinner there. I did not think it was a good bang for the buck, although the dessert was fantastic, and it was a bit too touristy for me, but I think that's just the location. All right, and Tony? Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was authentically Spanish. It was authentically European, and I enjoy sitting outside and sipping wine and eating paella. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to try B44 Catalan Bistro, it's on Belden Place in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-986-6287. It's open weekdays for lunch and dinner with dinner only on the weekends. Reservations are recommended and the average tab per person without drinks is around $35. I want to thank my great guests on this week's show, Twerry Anderson, Tony Rivera, and Eric Sweat. Twerry's Holy Land was appreciated by Tony, willing to travel overseas, mm -hmm. across the bridge, to sample the wares <laughs> along with the neighborhood cop. Eric felt the food uneven and the service indifferent, though. Tony's haunt, Sodini's Bertolucci's Ristorante, was a hit, with Eric feeling that it delivered on its promise of an old-fashioned, unpretentious American-Italian experience, and Twerry promising to visit again. <laughs> An enthusiasm for Eric's pick of B44 Catalan Bistro was shared by Tony, who would visit again for an authentic Spanish meal. While Twerry was disappointed in the service, she thought the food was okay. Well, another half hour spent discussing local dining options. Don't forget that if you want more information, you should check out our website where you can view this and all the shows online or download them to podcast. You can find out about the wines we've been tasting today along with photos and comments from our viewers too. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco and I'll see you then. Cheers. 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 Woohoo! This show is available in high definition, Comcast on demand and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. A KQED television production.